Have you wondered how to find frequencies that are in your area or in an area you're traveling to? That's what we're going to cover today. All right, so here we're going to go to radio reference, which is all things scanner related. All right, so once you get to radio reference, we we'll want to click on the reference database. And that's going to bring up a map of the United States. And uh, let's say we're going to go to Montana. Uh, if you're taking a trip or you live there, and you notice these are different colors. Uh, green means they've been updated within the last 30 days. Uh, yellow in the chart there is there at the bottom. shows you, you know, how, how recently stuff's been updated. So once we go to Montana... I'll make this window a little bigger here. You'll notice we've got search. We can look at amateur radio, trunk systems. Um, John Balfang, you're not going to be able to receive. But we'll go down, and these are the counties in Montana. So let's say we were going to go visit Billings. So Yellowstone County, Montana. And as we scroll down here, Here's uh, some of the frequencies that are in use in that area. So we can figure out what we want to listen to while we're there. And it gives us all of the information. Uh, we don't need to worry about the tone because the, uh, we're not transmitting. So we are only receiving on these. And that is an important thing to note. And I'll show you how to input a receive only frequency here in a minute. Now, on Radio Reference, it does have some amateur radio frequencies. Um, you'll find a lot of times these are slightly outdated, um, but they may have some good information for your area. But the repeater information oftentimes uh, gets, doesn't seem to uh, be updated very often. So we're going to show you how to find uh, repeaters that are used in your area here on another site in just a minute. But simplex frequencies in your area, these might be handy. Um, sometimes there's uh, some local ones that everybody uses in the area that might be nice to be able to listen into. All right, so this is repeater book. And this is usually pretty up to date with your local ham radio repeaters. And you can also go search for uh, repeaters in other places. So in our example, we said we we're going to take a trip to Montana. So we're going to click on North America. And we'll scroll down here. And here again is a map. So we can click on Montana. And this brings up the Montana amateur radio repeaters. So we'll scroll down. And uh, we have some different things we can search for here. All right, so we said we were going to go to Billings. So here's Billings. We'll click on that. And that's going to bring up the local repeaters that are in the Billings, Montana area. We'll scroll down. And here we, have, we can see our frequencies, uh, the offsets, which is how the repeater splits work. And it also has the tones and, and uh, where the repeater is located. All right, now here down lower, we can search by county. So we're in Yellowstone County, so we'll click on that. And here is the Yellowstone County repeaters, which might be a little wider than what you just have in Billings. So it gives you kind of more of the area repeaters if you're going to be driving around a little bit, and that might be handy. On the right-hand side, you'll notice the column that says Modes. Now you're looking for FM, things that say... Um, D-Star or DMR, uh, you're not going to be able to listen to with a Baofeng. You need FM modes only. Now, if we want, we can come up here and click on the highlighted frequency of the repeater, and it's going to take us to a little more information about that. But for now, we'll bring up Chirp, and we're going to put in that uh, frequency for the repeater in Billings. All right, so if we click on the highlighted frequency here, it will take us to a little more information about the repeater. 
uh, where it's located, uh, kind of where the coverage is, and some exact frequencies and that kind of stuff. Um, if there's any coverage, you know, if it, it favors, you know, Billings and West Billings, uh, it's kind of handy to, to be able to go in and look at that information. So we'll just go back here because this gives us all the information on one line. We're going to bring up chirp. And what I like to do is take chirp and place it right here under what I want to enter because it makes it easy to follow the information all the way across. So I'm going to type in the, the frequency of the repeater. Once I get that done, I'm going to enter the tone. This is what... When you key up, it's a sub-audible tone, and it's what keeps the repeater from keying up uh, randomly just from interference. So if this tone is not transmitted, or it's the wrong tone, you will not be able to key up your repeater. So that is important to, to put in. Uh, duplex, we need to make sure it's set for the, the positive offset. And we are FM, and I want to set this on high power. And then I usually try to go in and save stuff just in case something crashes. Uh, all your information is saved after you've entered stuff in. And then here you can type in a, an alphanumeric tag uh, for the repeater. So I usually try to put the location. Um, you're limited here on how many characters, so you might have to kind of abbreviate stuff. But it does make it a little easier to figure out what uh, frequency you're looking at. All right, so now that we have the repeater in, I'm going to click back over here to uh, repeat the radio reference. And I'm going to go look at the county home. All right, so I'll scroll down here. We're going to Billings. So I want to be able to listen to maybe some of the law enforcement while I'm there. So again, I'll, I'll pick kind of what line I want to look at. And you can scroll down. There's going to be other, other stuff around billings. You might have com uh, community services or... All right, so here's one of the police dispatches for billings. So again, I'll come down here and bring my chirp window back up. I'm going to place it right under the frequency I want to enter. It just makes it much easier to follow everything across. I'll click in the next memory channel that I want to enter in. I like keeping my ham stuff separated from other frequencies. It makes it easier when I'm scrolling through to know whether I'm in my ham stuff or, or in a, an area that I shouldn't be transmitting in. So we'll enter the frequency in here for the police dispatch. Uh, we can enter an alphanumeric tag here in again. Uh, you know, Bill PD or whatever I think is what I chose here. And the tone, again, does not matter. We're not transmitting. Uh, do not transmit on these. You can get in, in serious trouble. So what you're going to do is under duplex, instead of selecting none, you're going to click on this, and you're going to go say off. And that will prevent the radio from transmitting where you're not supposed to. So you can enter these things in and not have to worry about accidentally transmitting or your kids getting a hold of it and accidentally transmitting in an area that could get you into trouble. So again, the, the tone's not needed. You don't have to worry about that on these where we're not transmitting. Mode uh, will be narrow FM in this case. And then we can just come up here and save. And now we should be about ready to uh, upload this to the radio. All right, so we can say upload to radio. And it should have the, the radio model number and everything already selected there from the, when we did this last time. So when we say upload, that bar is going to come up. We'll see our flashing light on our radio. And once again, when this finishes, your radio is going to turn off. Uh, reboot and that's entirely normal it's just part of the programming finishing up if the bar doesn't come up when you uh, t tell it to go ahead and upload to radio just try it again sometimes the program gets a little finicky you might have to close the program reboot your computer and hook everything back up um, that's unfortunately just kind of the nature of windows and chirp and the different chipsets in the 
in the programming cable. But now that it comes up, you can see we have billing PD and the billings repeater is there. And if I put the transmit button here on billings PD, it will not let me transmit.